If you've been watching this year's NHL playoffs, the name Huawei may sound familiar. Actually, it's pretty hard to miss. Presented by Huawei Smartphones. Yes, Canada's national pastime brought to you by Huawei. The Chinese firm is one of the world's largest telecommunication companies and has been in Canada for a decade. Huawei sells phones across Canada and is working with Bell & Telus on the next generation of high-speed mobile networks. 5G is so fast you can download a movie in seconds and run virtual reality, drones and driverless cars all from your phone. Basically, it's the operating system for the future. But some of Canada's allies say China could use Huawei's technology to spy on the Canadian government, even spy on us. Last week, the Pentagon banned sales of Huawei phones on American military bases around the world. And FBI Director Christopher Wray had this to say. We're deeply concerned about the risks of allowing any company or entity that is beholden to foreign governments that don't share our values. It provides the capacity uh, to maliciously modify or steal information, and it provides the capacity to conduct undetected espionage. Huawei isn't owned by the Chinese government, but its founder is a former officer in the People's Liberation Army, and its chairwoman is reportedly linked to China's spy agency. Chinese companies are under growing pressure to show loyalty to the state. A CEO of a Chinese tech firm put it this way. If you see the situation clearly and are able to move in sync with the state, you will get great support. But if it's in your nature to say, I want freedom, I want to sing a tune different from the states, then you might suffer more so than in the past. We wanted to show you that video of the interview, but the New York Times says it's vanished from the internet. All of this comes as President Xi Jinping consolidates power by abolishing term limits. And Beijing also launched a new mass surveillance system which scores citizens based on what they say on social media. China collects data from tech firms to create that ranking and critics warn the system could be exported as the country's global tech reach expands even further. So to be clear, there have been no reports of any wrongdoing by Huawei in Canada. And Public Safety Minister Ralph Goodale told the Globe and Mail Huawei is being monitored and does not pose a risk to Canada's cybersecurity. Yet former heads of Canada's national security agencies think letting Huawei get involved in Canada's future networks is a risk not worth taking. I'm joined by one of those voices now. Ward Elcock is a former CSIS director and deputy minister of national defence. So... Can you spell out for us, what is the actual, let's start with the phones first. There's been talk about part of the fear is a back door on, on someone's phone. The reality is the threat is a, a trap in any piece of equipment that Huawei may sell, a trap or a back door. Uh, the average Canadian is probably not going to be much bothered if there is a trap in his phone or a back door in his phone. But the reality is if you have, a, if, if Huawei were to put such traps and back doors in some of its equipment, then it would be accessible and allow the interception of communications that move through the system. So it's more about the system that would be installed that would it's allow... More about, it's more about the governmental communications, about important private communications, things like that, that an intelligence service would in fact be interested in and, and would therefore seek to have Huawei install the necessary traps and back doors so they can access the system. And yet, of course, you've got the government saying that there is no risk here. Huawei says there's no risk. I think, what, I think what both Canada and the UK have tried to do is to mitigate the risk by trying to examine the equipment and find the risks ahead of time. The question really is, can you provide a certain a degree of certainty? What is the degree of certainty you can provide that there are no traps and backdoors? It's a very hard thing to find a trap or a backdoor. I know that our capacity is very good, but the reality is I would like more certainty. Why is there such a fear about China? Because the Chinese have interest in collecting intelligence. Uh, and operate against most countries in the world to do so. The Chinese interests are not Canada's interests at the end of the day. Uh, if the Chinese have an interest in collecting intelligence against Canada, whether that's commercial or governmental information, they will do so without hesitation and have done so in the past. Are you saying that this is an active tool of the state? I mean, they're, they're, not, they're not owned by the government? They're not owned by the government, but the reality is, as a, as a Chinese corporation, they probably have a committee of the Communist Chinese Party inside the organization. Most organizations will obey the instructions of the Chinese Party or obey pressures from the Chinese Party.
Chinese Communist Party. So why is Canada then allowing this technology in? I mean, is, is the government naive? I think the government is, is weighing a balance and is trying to ensure trade with China at the same time as exercising a degree of, of security by inspecting the equipment and trying to determine whether they're back doors or not. The issue is a balance. It's a complicated issue, not a simple issue at all. I, I accept that. But the reality is that, that judgment, in my view, ought to be made more on the basis of security rather than simple trade with China. So much to think of. Mr. Elcock, thank you so much. A pleasure. We asked Huawei Canada for comment, and they say there has never been an issue with Huawei devices sold in Canada, nor in any major market around the world. Also, that Huawei works openly and transparently with Canadian operators and the Canadian government to ensure the safety and security of all other network equipment sold in Canada.